Hi and welcome to Gas Corning. Today we're going to take a look at a reciprocal lap. We have one here at the show, so we're going to show you how this goes together once you get it in your shop and the way to get it going for you so it's going to work the best for you. So let's dive in and take a look at what's going to happen when you unpack this. Here's your reciprocal lap after it's unpacked. The first thing you're going to want to do is take this wheel head off. You can see you got little divots in here. This is where your pieces will go, what shakes and rotates and grinds your pieces. So it's easier to have at least two people to take this off. If you have a very large one, you're going to have to have a couple of people take it off. It lifts right up. You're going to want to take it off, lean it over. Now you'll see on the raceway for your pan, it comes with packing grease. This does not stay on this pan. It will not work well if you leave the packing grease on. You do want to remove this. So that's one of the first things we're going to do is go ahead and wipe all this packing grease off the raceway. We'll get it nice and clean. So once your raceway is clean, the next thing you want to do is take your steel plates, you'll have six of these, and put one in each of your little bearing keepers around the base of your shipper lap. Now once your steel plates are in, the next thing you'll have are nylon balls. The nylon balls, two of each in each bearing keeper here. You want to fill just over the top of the plate with about a 40 weight oil. That's about all it takes. You want these to be lubricated as they'll work. I'm not going to show that right now because this is a display model for this show, but you do want to make sure you get oil in these gearing keepers, otherwise your receiver lap will not operate correctly and you'll wear out these nylon balls extremely quickly. So once you have your nylon balls and your steel plates in and you put your oil in, now you're going to want to put your plate back on. Also a two-person job. So once you get it on, you'll see that it runs quite smoothly all the way around. You have a plug system here with a switch. Once you switch that on and have it going, it'll vibrate and rotate and grind your pieces quite nicely. And we'll show you how that works on an older model right now. Now that we've seen how a reciprocal lap goes together, we're going to take a piece that we have cast here. This is a piece of lead crystal, the F2 material that we carry, that we've cast in an oven. Uh, it's got a fair amount of weight to it. It's probably about five and a half pounds, so it should be enough weight distributed in the reciprocal lap to be able to grind down our kiln shelf texture here. So give a nice polished bottom. We want to polish both sides of this so the top part looks pretty good. The bottom part has a lot of the kiln shelf texture on it. We're going to do this in a reciprocal lap because it's very difficult to do a large flat heavy piece like this on a flat lap. So we're going to put this in the reciprocal lap with some grit, get it going, and it'll show you how well it works to try and grind down surfaces like this. So the first thing we'll add to our reciprocal lap is some water. Now you want enough water in here so it's not going to dry out as it's grinding, but you don't want so much water that you're going to create a whole lot of splashing. It's going to create some splashing anyway, so that's unavoidable. That's why you have the nice splash guard in here. And reciprocal laps can kind of make a mess, so you'll have to get used to that. The next thing we add is a little bit of grit. That's probably a lot of grit. That's going to move around and you'll see how that works. Now we'll take our cast piece. Here's our cast glass. You can see our kiln shelf texture on there. And then I'll put it right in our reciprocal lap. Now the newer reciprocal laps will actually have a switch on them. Ours is just going to plug into the wall. You can also set these on a timer so you don't have to really babysit them at all. And you can see as the reciprocal lap is going, the grit's starting to spread around. Our piece will move around randomly on the surface of the reciprocal lap. And then we can just let this go for a few hours. You do want to make sure that your piece has some random movement to it. That should be accomplished pretty easily by the bumper guard. Every so often your piece will probably run up against the bumper and bounce itself around. And we'll just let the weight of the piece and time and the grit take care of the grinding. So our 60 grit in the reciprocal lap has been moving for about three and a half, three and three quarter hours right now. So I'm going to stop the reciprocal lap, take our piece out, and we're going to check and see the status to see if it has ground down that surface for us or not. It's looking almost 
And I can actually see we've still got a corner here that has not been ground yet. So I'm going to put this back in our super lap for a little bit longer. So our piece of cast glass has now been on our zipper lap for about four hours. That should be good enough to hopefully get this all the way down. So I'm going to turn our zipper lap off, take my piece out, and we're going to check on it. Now you'll notice in their zipper lap the water's very brown. This is a lot of rust that is happening on the plate, and that's fine. That's not a problem at all to have some rust going on on your plate. And that's looking pretty good. That has ground down quite nicely. We'll clean it off and we'll take a quick look. Now you can see that our plate's looking pretty good. Still got some water on it there. But it has given you a nice surface. It has grounded down quite nicely. Give me a nice flat surface. And what we'll do next is we will change our grit in our pan. So, we'll do so now that we've finished our first grind in our recipro lap, you can see it's pretty messy. And this is pretty typical of a recipro lap. If you have a lot of material that you're going to be working on in the recipro lap, it's often advantageous to have more than one recipro lap. One for each particular grit, a rough grit, a fine grit, a polish. That's generally all you need to really get away with. Now, if you don't have the studio space or the budget, you can make do with a single recipro lap. There are a couple of things you can do. You can either buy separate pans for each base, so you can keep a 60 grit pan, a fine grit pan, a polishing pan, and switch the pans out on your base. So that gets a little more affordable. It's also a little bit more effort. The other thing you can do is go with one recipro lap and clean out between each stage. So that's what we're gonna do with this one real fast, just to show you how that works. Now the first thing you wanna do after your glass is gone is to take out your splash guard. This is easiest to take outside and hose it off. It's pretty nasty in there. You've got a lot of grit in there, a lot of different things. You want to get this cleaned out before you put your next stage in here. So we're going to take that out. The same thing applies to your bumper ring. It's also going to have a lot of your rougher grit on there. So you're going to want to take this out, take it outside, take it apart, wash it off really well. So at this point, you can take your pan off your recipro lap, take it outside as well and hose it off if you like. But you can also leave your pan on your base and just use a shop vac to clean this out. Now this will take a couple of different turns to do this. We'll suction out the existing water that's in here and then we'll keep flushing it with new water and suctioning that out until we've got it nice and clean. Now you want to be sure to really clean out the recipro lap extremely well between grits. You do not want to leave any 60 grits or rougher grits on this recipro lap when you get around to doing your finer grit. So it's really important to clean this extremely well. Now once you feel like you've gotten a lot of the material out, you'll want to go over this again with either a plastic bristle brush or a sponge with a good soft scrubbing part on here. Now if you use a sponge, you do want to use one sponge for every grit. Don't cross or you'll cross contaminate. You want to try and get in all these little divots and scrub all the way around just to make sure you've gotten everything out. So we're going to do that real quick now. Now, as you see, we've cleaned it out. It's uh, set for a little bit, so it's developing some rust. And as I said before, rust is not a big deal. It is not gonna affect your glass. It is not gonna cause a problem. So again, we're gonna put some water in here. Enough to fill the pan. Now I'm skipping over to a 220 grit. Now here's our piece that we have ground with our 60. So now we're gonna go in with our 220. We're gonna let this go for a little while. After two different steps in the recipro lap, 
a 60 grit for my rough grind, and then a 220 grit to give me this nice surface. It's looking really, really nice. Your super laps are fantastic for skipping large steps and being able to get down to a surface that's very nice very quickly. I could probably take this surface left over from the 220 grit, put a felt pad or an LP66 pad in my reciprocal lap with some cerium and accomplish a polish with this. But we also have another stage that utilizes garnet to try and clean up this surface a little further to really prep it for a polish. So we're gonna use a little bit of garnet in our reciprocal lap and let this run and we're gonna see how much of a difference it's gonna make on this surface and how quickly it'll increase our polish. Go back in the reciprocal lap. We're going to add a little bit of the garnet. And let it go. Now the fun thing about this, since our topper is polished and our bottom is getting really nice, you can see all the divots in our reciprocal lap here and how the grit works under the reciprocal lap. That it's slowly moving our abrasive around underneath our piece. You can see how effective this works by seeing those little divots now. So our cast piece has been in the reciprocal lap for about an hour now. Let's see what the garnet's done to it by now. I know that's not a tremendous amount of time for the piece to be in the reciprocal lap. Ooh, but we're gonna see what the garnet's gonna do to it. Well, and there's the problem that you have when a piece is really, really flat, is it wants to stay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, here's an intriguing issue you might run into. We have a very large, flat piece in our shipper lap, and it is ground down very, very flat because the reciprocal lap is also very flat. The problem comes in when you have two very flat pieces, they want to make a joint, which means this does not want to come up out of our reciprocal lap. And this might not be uncommon with your pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to suction everything out of our reciprocal lap here and we're going to try and use some compressed air to get the piece to release itself from the bottom plate of the reciprocal lap. So first, now that we have most of the water out of our pan, we're going to take some compressed air and we're going to find some dimples in our reciprocal lap that our pan is under. And you can see how the air is spreading. And hopefully, oh, releasing our piece. <laughs> this could take two hands. There we go. Now you wanna be very careful when you do that as this is a metal pan and if your piece jumps around a lot, you're going to knock a lot of chips out of the edges of your piece. Now, this one came loose pretty easily, but you can see how a large flat surface ground on a reciprocal lap gets very, very flat and wants to stay on there. Compressed air can be your friend sometimes. The final stage in our reciprocal lap will be the polishing step. And for that, we're going to utilize a synthetic felt pad. Now, you may be able to see in this some of the little perforations. You can see all the little holes in the pad. Now you can use our synthetic felt pad in the reciprocal lap, or you can use our LP66 material in the reciprocal lap. Any of the polishing media that we carry, you can use. We'll utilize this synthetic felt along with some cerium oxide to do our polish. Now your reciprocal lap will come with a sort of green astroturfy type material. That's going to be good for polishing lapidary type work, but it's not going to work with your glass. You will need to use either a synthetic felt or the LP66 material. Now this is a 24 inch reciprocal lap, so I have a 22 inch felt pad. It is magnetically backed, so it will sit down into our reciprocal lap with a little bit of room to spare. So you do still have your little trough around the edge of the reciprocal lap for the water and the cerium to reach. Now you want to try and cover your felt pad with enough water so it covers the pad and gives you a little bit of room and it will absorb a little bit. Now the cerium step is gonna be a little bit messier because you are gonna have a little bit more water involved in that. Here's our glass piece that we're ready to polish. It's got a nice surface to begin with, so it should go pretty easily. We're gonna stick our piece into our reciprocal lap here onto our felt pad. Take a little bit of cerium 
It's not going to take a lot of cerium because it is going to recycle itself in here. Now the very first time you use your felt pad in your Reciprolap, you may need a little bit more cerium in there because it's going to absorb some. But for the most part, it's going to recycle the cerium. So you don't need a tremendous amount of cerium in there. It's not going anywhere. Turn it on. Our Reciprolap has been running for about five hours. Just shut it off. Oh, and that's sectioned in quite nicely. I'll wash this off and we're gonna see how well it did after five hours. So after about five hours time, this is a pretty good polish. Now I've still got some corner issues. I don't know if you can see it. it hasn't quite reached some of the corners yet, but the majority of the piece is a very nice polish on there. As you can see, both myself and the lights. I'm going to leave this go for a little bit longer in the reshipper lap to see if it can get down to the corners. I am going to add just a little bit more water. You have to be very careful at the polishing stage to make sure it does not dry out as your felt pad will absorb quite a bit of moisture. So our reshipper lap has been running about eight hours now with the cerium oxide. We're going to give it a break and we're going to see how well this has been polished. Now again, when you're using a felt pad and cerium in your Reciprolap, you really want to pay a lot of attention to it. You don't want this to dry out and have your piece get stuck to the felt pad underneath. That could be very, very difficult to remove. So you do want to babysit it a little bit more when you're polishing to make sure it doesn't get dry. Now you'll see after about eight hours in there, that is an absolutely spectacular polish on there. Super tight, nice edges, very, very flat, beautiful polish on this piece. It's the power of a reciprolap right there.